Hi, welcome to today's video where I'll be showing you how I made these cinematic product shots here in my living room. If you watched the Sidemen channel, you would have seen this at the start of a Sidemen Sunday video as a brand integration. I am actually not sponsored by YouTube's. However, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it happen with Squarespace. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Constantine and I'm a freelance videographer. I also have this YouTube channel where I share behind the scenes of music videos, I make photography videos, tutorials, and much more. So if you're into all that kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing because there's more content coming your way. Well, this is my living room and it's where I'm going to be spending my next couple of days, maybe weeks or even months, who knows. Anyway, I decided to film on my dinner table. I have the option of using a motorized slider to capture some more dynamic shots. I can program this slider to move in the exact same speed and action over and over again. This is going to be a great feature that will help us later on in the edit. Camera wise, I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And accompanied with that camera, I have the Canon 24 to 105 mil lens. There's these annoying specks of dust. Um, I need to try and get rid of them as much as possible. Camera's all set up, table's cleaned. All I need to do now is set up the lighting and I'm ready to take my product shots. So currently on camera, this is how it looks. Uh, it's nothing impressive, but once I switch this on, boom, these are pretty lit now. And then the background, there you go. How does that look on camera? Oh wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> I just need to change some settings on this camera. But yeah, that looks amazing already. And imagine the slider moving around, getting some cool action. I'm very excited. I've just transformed my whole living room into a film studio. We've got our product on the table, some tube lights in the background, and our camera on a slider. I'm gonna go ahead and switch these lights off because we don't really need them for this. Ooh, pretty. So the setup has changed a tiny bit. I'm no longer using the ring light. I'm using two more tubes to light our product. And then I have our background light, which is the pink tubes at the back, and then I have some side lighting. Ta da! I left the slider to repeat the same action over and over again as I swapped out the figures. In our edit, we'll be able to match cut these shots together for a seamless transition from one figure to another. Carried on doing the same thing with the figures now unboxed. I experimented with different lens filters and lights for a different effect.
All right, well now it's on to the second stage of the process and that's the editing. Just before I get into all of that, I'd like to give a quick shout out from this channel sponsor. Squarespace makes it really easy to build a professional looking website with no knowledge in coding. They have templates, they do domains, and they have really great customer service. One of the best things is that Squarespace optimizes your website, so not only does it look great on mobile devices, but it functions really well. It's the simple and intuitive things that Squarespace provides that I like as a user. Simple things such as being able to add a contact form within a couple of clicks, or even being able to add a Google map to show where your business is located. It's little things like this that will help you build a professional looking website and Squarespace make it really easy to do it. Personally, I'm building my second website on Squarespace and it's for a photography studio that I'm looking to give some more social presence for. And my other website is more of a portfolio based website to show off my work. Why not check out Squarespace for yourself and just head over to that link in my description for a 14 day free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use my code Constantine to get 10% off your purchase. Okay, so after I've imported everything through onto my Premiere Pro timeline, it looks like I have just under 40 minutes worth of footage. Insane. I only need a couple seconds from each of the clips, so I don't know why I've shot for so long. I'm just going to load up the project so you guys can see what I've been working with. But the first effect that we have on our timeline is Vic picking up the box, we zoom into the box and then we transition to the boxes on the dinner table that I shot over there flicking through. So how did I do that? That's actually like one of the easiest things. Okay, so here is our original clip. It's actually two minutes long. And as you can see, all I'm doing is swapping out the boxes into the exact same position where the previous box was. That means if we select all of the clips without my hands in it, it should look something like this. There you go, that took me uh, probably a minute to do. You're probably wondering where the JJ figurine is. Well. He, I think he messed up his box and didn't have his box anymore. So I didn't have that. I only had his actual figure. So what you're going to want to do now is make sure that these clips are all the same length. Plus you're going to want them very, very short. Okay. So I've shortened my clips down to two frames each. So when I click play, that's it. That's what happens. Obviously you're going to want it to flick through a bit longer. So what I'm going to do is nest all of these clips which basically puts it into one video like this. And then I'm gonna copy this video, paste it, I'm gonna paste it a couple more times actually. So when you do click play now, it just keeps flicking through and through. I'm now gonna nest this. So it's all one video. And now you're free to add more controls onto this. So if I do wanna make this clip zoom in as it flicks through I can do that by altering our motion settings over here so as you can see it's zooming in when it came to the actual final video what I did was when Vic picks up the box I zoom into the box that he's holding and then I added a transition called iris box if we play it frame by frame it sort of opens up our next clip as a box like this and expands into the full screen version easy so with the next effect i try to transition one figure to another figure whilst we had a one long continuing moving shot as you can see the sliders moving and then bam we transition into another shot and the slider is still carrying on with the same motion so we have our two clips that we want to transition together we have ethan and we have our JJ figurine as well, moving up and down. We need to decide where we need to transition both of these together. I think midway over here, right between the two lights could be a good point. And I need to find the exact same position of JJ here as well. So I'd say roughly about here. Let's overlay these clips together. Let me turn down the transparency of this down as well. As you can see right now, I had my rough estimation was pretty good, but the lights in the background aren't matching up. So we have to match them up as close as possible. We've got a pretty solid match on our hands right there. So if we play the clips together, there you go, it just cuts. But we wanna avoid that sharp cut and make it transition a bit more smoother. Something in to create a mask around JJ and then fade it out so it's very smooth. Let's go ahead and draw our mask. And I'm just gonna feather this mask so we've got a nice smooth edge around it. I'm also gonna keyframe the mask expansion. So with the expansion, I'm gonna actually start at a minus so we don't see JJ. We're gonna start at minus 400. And then I'm gonna expand the mask expansion to thousand 
And now when I play it frame by frame, you'll see how he fades in, Ethan fades out, and then our background is still the same. See, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? All you have to do is align both of your clips so they're at the exact same position and then add in a smooth transition. Another big tip is to actually position whatever you're filming in the same spot if you want to transition flawlessly between them. Because uh, when it came down to Vic and Toby, I placed Toby just a bit off the center. However, I used a glitch transition to cover up the fact that I didn't have it perfectly centered. I think it worked out pretty well. All right, well, that's pretty much it for my video. However, other product videography videos go in a lot more. They have all these fancy rigs, these probe lenses, mechanical arms, timed piece of machines that flick burgers and stuff. I'm sure you've seen some videos out there already. As far as my video goes, that was very basic. There is a whole other world of product videography that I'm really fascinated by. Like I love watching those types of videos. So maybe I can get involved in more of that kind of stuff in the future. But for now, smash the like button, consider subscribing if you're new, hit me up on my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. And I'll see you guys in the next video.